Among all the concerns surrounding Kevin Durant's leg injury in Game 5 of the Western Semis, another headline emerged, and that was James Harden's passivity in the fourth quarter. Harden was missing from the play-by-play. After a three at the 858 mark, his only offensive contribution in the stat sheet was a turnover over the next eight minutes. Let's revisit the tape to see just exactly what happened in Harden's fourth quarter. On the first play, Houston gets a switch with Paul attacking Jarebko, and he misses, but this is standard for Houston's offense. Sometimes Paul runs the show instead of Harden. On the next trip, Clay overplays what is often a little handoff to get Harden downhill. The back cut fizzles out, and they work the whole trip to come back to Harden, who makes this Barishnikov floater. Next time down, it's a small, small pick and roll, but notice that Golden State keeps two with Harden instead of switching. This was a theme throughout the game, and a reason why Harden finished with only 16 shot attempts. After the foul, they try to get him some of that handoff action, but again, the dubs trap and the shot clock expires. The next trip, Harden makes a nice hit ahead in transition, and it leads to a clean look and a friendly bounce on a three. On his fifth possession of the quarter, Harden runs into a traditional pick and roll coverage, gets the ball back to Tucker, and this creates an advantage that puts the Golden State defense on the run, with the ball ending up back in Harden's hands for an open three. Next time they get Paul isoed on Jarebko again, and the play works, collapsing the D and leading to a wide open triple. So let's keep track of what we've seen so far. That's six possessions to start the quarter for Houston. Three of the five half-court trips went through Harden, and the six was Harden's outlet that led to an open shot. Pretty standard for Houston's offense so far, and for Harden's involvement rate in possessions. After a brief rest, the Beard is back and tries an advanced lob pass, but Kavon Looney makes a great play, and Houston loses the jump ball. On the next possession, he goes right to work in the pick and roll, and this lovely pocket pass exposes the defense and ultimately creates another wide open shot. Next time down, notice Draymond shading heavily to the ball side, and Gordon skips Harden to move it to the open man, and it ends up with CP3 going to the rim and getting free throws. At the five minute mark, Harden attacks in pick and roll and draws a foul, and on the reset, sends the ball to the other side and Gordon drills another three. We'll count this in our tally of uninvolved possessions, but he did draw a foul on this same trip. Harden's 10th possession of the period ends up with an isolation on Iguodala, and he beats him and makes a good pass, but Draymond and Iggy recover instantly and Tucker can't finish. We're inside four minutes now and Paul runs some action that leads to a charge. And on the next Houston trip, Harden again goes at Iggy in isolation, creating what would ultimately be an open three, but Tucker stepped out of bounds, negating the shot. Harden again pitches to Paul, but this time Clay mucks up what Houston wants to do here, and so Paul attacks and ends up with more free throws. Next time down, Paul orchestrates the pick and roll action, He gets the favorable switch, and Houston's spacing, as described in a recent video with Jordan Sperber, stretches Golden State thin. We're down to the wire now, and the Rockets' frenetic push here leads to a near layup, but Looney makes a great block. Green then carelessly fouls on the inbounds, so it's more free points for Houston without Harden needing to lift a finger or even getting a chance to. In the final minute with the Rockets down six, they run bread and butter action and Harden creates a wide open layup. And on the final competitive possession of the game, Harden takes it to the backpedaling big to keep Houston alive. All told, there were seven possessions where Harden wasn't really involved at all, and an eighth if we count the play that reset after he was fouled. What's noteworthy about all those possessions is that they were either plays run through Chris Paul, which is totally standard for Houston, or rocket advantages. Those plays led to open shots on all but one occasion and netted 11 points in eight trips for an offensive rating of 138. Overall, Houston's offense was actually awesome in the fourth quarter of this game when Harden was on the court. If we remove a technical foul, they scored 24 points in their 19 live possessions for an offensive rating of 126, which is cream of the crop offense in the clutch. 
Harden himself went two for three from the field, drew a foul, created two shots for teammates, and would have had a third shot created if not for Tucker stepping out of bounds, and also set up a potential layup assist, but Tucker couldn't finish. And this is exactly why I prefer metrics like offensive load when estimating offensive involvement instead of usage rate. According to traditional usage, Harden's fourth quarter involved three shots and a turnover in his 19 possessions for a 21% fourth quarter usage rate. That's a little over half his regular season number when Chris Paul is on the court. But his offensive load, which includes those elements of creation and passing, would have been 42% if not for Tucker stepping out of bounds and missing that layup. And that level of involvement is only slightly down from his regular season rate with CP3 on the court, which in this stretch comes out to an extra play or two where Harden would be active, which makes it a completely normal 19-play stretch for the Houston Rockets. And this is where winning bias kicks in. Winning bias is a phenomenon where we look for all the positive contributions to explain why a team won and seek out negative reasons for why they lost. I devote an entire chapter to the details of this psychological effect in the book, Thinking Basketball, but the reaction to Harden's fourth quarter is an incredible case study in winning bias. Here's what Chris Broussard said on FS1. Quote, what stood out to me is that they were playing differently. Harden wasn't on the ball for the most part. You're playing completely differently than you played all season, all series, all game. That's what's going to make me wonder what's going to happen to Harden and CP3 in the crunch moments. But of course, as we just saw, Houston's offense down the stretch was excellent, and Harden's involvement rate with Paul beside him wasn't abnormally low at all. For me, the great irony in cases like this is that Harden actually played a phenomenal overall game, and down the stretch his offense wasn't actually passive, but if anything, Harden's fourth quarter was quite effective. Be sure to check out my latest podcast with 538's Neil Payne. We discuss the philosophical battle between the Rockets and the Warriors. Link in the description below. As always, thanks so much to my Patreon supporters for helping me make these videos, and I hope you're all having a great day.